time frames or how to learn it. My name is Wendy, and in this video, we'll be looking at forms of power. Well, if I may ask, what is power? Well, power will be defined as the ability to influence people. If you're able to control the decisions of people, you're said to have power. So it's simply the ability to influence others to do what you want them to do. We have different forms of power. We have political, it could be physical, it could be economic, it could be military power. Now, let's take them. Political power. Political power is simply the power that resides in the government to enforce its will on the citizens of a state. Physical power is the use of force or violence to enforce one's will or decision. We have economic power. It's the use of economic resources at the person's disposal to coerce or control people. While well, the last one, military power, is the power that is exercised by the military or the armed forces. So, where do they get this powerful sources of power? Remember, I mentioned four forms of power. We have fiscal power, the political power, the economic power, and the military power. Now, the people that exercise power, where do they get their power from? That's what it means. That's what's meant by sources of power. Power can be gotten in various ways. One, we have the constitution. Now, the constitution refers to the rules, the laws, the regulations governing a particular state. For instance, in Nigeria, we have the 1999 constitution. So, yes, people get power. People get power from the constitution. Secondly, we have inheritance. That's when you're referring to traditional power, the ruling class, the monarchs, the kings. They inherit, most, some of them inherit the spouse, like in the United Kingdom, for instance, we have the British royal family. Such power is inherited. Thirdly, we have a position of authority. As an individual, your authority can confer power on you. It could, it could also be true coercion. Another word for coercion is force. And this type of power is majorly exercised by the armed forces. They use force to enforce their decisions on the populace. And lastly, we have charisma. Well, charisma is simply your personal qualities, your attributes that end their people to you, that attract others to you. So yes, the individuals that have this ability, they call them born leaders, they have this ability to influence others, to control people. So that's charisma. Remember, we have constitution, inherited power, charisma, position of authority, and coercion. What is authority that we ask? Well, authority is the ability to give laws and enforce obedience. What are the sources of authority? We have the traditional source, we have the legal source, and the charismatic source. Now, the traditional source of authority is the source of authority, like I mentioned earlier, that is hereditary. It's something that is inherited based on the person's ancestry, especially those in the royal family. That's the traditional rulers. Yes, children, people born into that lineage exercise this type of authority based on traditions that are governing society in which they are born. Secondly, we have legal authority. Now, this legal authority is generally derived from the constitution of the state and lastly we have charismatic authority that's authority that is based on personal qualities of the individual well, we have some of the types of authority political authority the coercive authority delegated authority traditional authority and legal rational authority what's political authority well this is the type of authority that is conferred on individuals by the constitution is the authority conferred on individuals by the constitution. For instance, the government of a state has the power to make laws. The president also has the president also has the ability to make laws. So this type of authority that is conferred on individuals by the constitution of the state is referred to as the political authority. Secondly, we have coercive authority. This type of authority is derived through the use of force, as name implies. It's derived through the use of force. Thirdly, we have delegated authority. 
non-delegated authority is usually conferred on people by their subordinates. For instance, in organizations, you could have the president and the vice president. Now, in absence of the president, the vice president steps into the shoes of the president. So in that instance, we can see the vice president is having delegated authority. So it's an authority that is conferred on a subordinate to exercise certain powers. Another one is the traditional authority. It's usually gotten from the customs and traditions of a given society. And lastly, we have the legal rational authority. Now this power is usually, this type of authority is legitimized by the laws of a state, which means it has the backing of, it's backed by the law of the society in which it's been exercised. What's the difference between power and authority? Well, from their definitions, you can actually come up with some differences. Power is usually applied to the use of force, yes. That's why we have a coercive, um, the military um, power, it's usually through the use of force. But in case of authority, it's exercised mostly without application of force. Now, punishment that goes with power, punishment that goes with power is usually more severe. It's a power, like the governor of a state has the right to sentence an individual to death. And he also has the right to grant individuals pardon. So in that instance, we can say punishment that goes with power is usually more severe than in authority. People in authority, yes, they possess um, a certain level of power, but not as much as that of a person that is wielding power. Thirdly, power may be legitimate, and it may be in, it may be illegitimate. Now, what do I mean by that? We have the military power. There are cases of um, in instances where there is a coup d'état. That is um, the government of a government by the military. Such power is usually illegitimate. But authority, the main attribute of authority is legitimacy. Authority must be legitimate for it to be recognized as such. And while power can not be delegated, authority can be delegated. The president cannot delegate his power to his wife. No, it cannot be delegated, it cannot be given to another person. But in authority, yes, the head teacher can delegate authority to a staff of the school in his absence. Probably that has come to the end of this lecture. Thank you.